Today, we're going to turn an edge like this into this. So if you've been leather crafting for any length of time, then you have probably seen these crafters who magically get these mirror finishes on their leather edges. And if you haven't seen these things, then just go on to Instagram and look up Icky Leather, Lesbian EDC, or Benjamin Bot. They are all experts when it comes to the glass edge. I will link their profiles down below. But if you're already familiar with the glass edge, then I assume you've also probably looked into how to do it. But there is a surprising lack of knowledge on how to do this. I mean, it's obvious that you need to put in more effort than you normally would when you're burnishing your edges, but there needs to be something more to it than that, right? So with this lack of information out there, many people will drop comments in videos and on Instagram pictures or whatever for these types of creators asking how they do it. And if that crafter responds at all, it will usually just be something like, it's all in the sanding. This is actually kind of true, but it's not the entire truth. Like it is about sanding, but up to what grit? And do you just sand and then burnish with tokenol like you normally would? To get to the bottom of this, I reached out to my buddy Icky Leather a while back. This is the same Icky Leather that pitched the tokenol pen to me. This guy knows his stuff. While talking to him, he actually mentioned that he had posted a series of stories on Instagram that explained exactly how to get this glass edge. He actually has them saved in his highlights in his profile. Those highlights are still there if you want to see them. I will link his profile below. Head there after the video and you can check out his process. He gave me a few more pointers and then he sent me on my quest to learn the secrets of the glass edge. Jumping into this here, this is what you're gonna need. You will need a completed leather thing I'm using six layers of veg tan that's glued together. Uh, you're probably going to want to use a wallet or something you made. Just keep in mind that some leathers are better than others for this. Veg tan is preferable, although I have made this work with uh, an oil tan leather. Batero and Pueblo leather make a really beautiful glass edge. And of course, Shell Cordovan, Cordovan, I still don't know how to say that word, but Shell has the best edge for this. It will be the shiniest one. So if you're going for the absolute best, that's the stuff you probably want to use. A super floppy and soft chrome tan is probably not gonna be your friend for this thing. You are gonna need some sandpaper and lots of it. This is my pack of sandpaper. It ranges from 220 to 3000 grit. You're gonna use every one of these. But for the glass edge, you are gonna need a little bit more than 3000 grit, and that's where the micro mesh sandpapers come in. These things continue where the other sandpaper left off, and they go up to 12,000 grit. And when you buy these, these small ones suck. I bought these just to kind of try it out, but buy the big sheets of micro mesh. I'll link sandpaper, micro mesh, everything down below. You're gonna need some tokenol for this, and as always, I would recommend a grog marker for applying the tokenol. If you're unfamiliar with the grog marker, I have a video on it, I will link that below as well. You are gonna need something to burnish with, and ditch the wood slicker on this one. The canvas cloth bag thing is gonna be your friend here. I've tried with both, and this does a nicer edge for this. And finally, you're gonna need an ice pack and some ibuprofen. You have a lot of sanding ahead of you. Let's get into it. First, I'm gonna run this through my machine. That drum is 120 grit. You definitely don't need to use a machine for this. Hand sanding works just fine, but I have a machine, so I'm gonna use it here. Now comes the hand sanding. I'm starting with 220 grit. You can either lay it down flat and sand like this or pick it up. It doesn't really matter. Just work your way through each grit. You have to take your time. I should also mention here that some people say that you need to sand it going in one direction over and over again instead of sanding the normal way back and forth. I've tried both ways. I don't really notice a difference. You are welcome to try it though. Some people swear by it. Once 
Once I got to around 800 grit, I bevel the edge. This is also where I start layering on the tokenal. Once you've sanded with 800 grit, apply the tokenal and burnish with your canvas cloth. You're just going to want to burnish like you normally would, just till it does that clicking thing. And we're going to do this between grits for a little bit now. I actually did two layers of tokenal here, but I do one layer between each grit going forward. Before I do each layer of tokenal, I do just quickly buff it with the cloth to remove any fine particles. I don't actually know if this helps, but it is just a thing I do. Okay, so we sand, tokenal, burnish, then move up a grit and you repeat the process until we get to about 3200. Depending what micro mesh you buy, you might not have 3200, you might have 3400 or, or something else. Let's just say stop adding tokenal after 3000 grit. Now I simply sand it and buff it with the cloth. Adding tokenal at this point actually does take away from the shine. I have tried this a lot, trust me. Just keep plugging away until you're out of grits and you should have an edge that you can see your beautiful face in. I'll be honest, this isn't even my best work. I probably could have spent some more time on it and it still turned out amazing. It's so shiny. This is definitely one of those things where the more work you put in, the better it's gonna look. If you spend more time than I did sanding, you're gonna have a better result. And I know I'm gonna have comments and messages telling me that a shine like this is unnecessary. I even had them in my how to burnish video saying that it was overkill. If you don't want to put in the work to get a shine like this, that's fine, just don't do it. But if you do want to go the extra mile, this method should work great for you. So a while back, I created a Patreon account that I completely forgot about. It has been linked in every video that I have, but I have never actively promoted it at all. But recently, I was reminded that I had it when I got my first patron. So this is a shout out to Tom McBride. I really appreciate it, Tom. Every cent that I make on Patreon will be reinvested into this channel. So basically, this video is sponsored by Tom McBride. Thank you, dude, so much. I appreciate it. If you do want to support the channel on Patreon, the link is somewhere down in the description. Please don't feel obligated to if you can't afford it. It is totally optional, but it is very much appreciated. If you do try to do a glass edge using this method, Post a reel of it on Instagram, I'd love to see it. Tag me on there and I will uh, take a look. And if you do have anything to add to my method to make it better or faster, would be nice. Uh, post it down below in the description. I would love to hear about it. Anyway, that's it for me. I'm gonna go do anything other than sanding. Thanks guys.